Hey guys, welcome back to the Bug Atlantic for another round of comic chat. We've got three books today, as seems to be the theme we're going for here. And uh, we've got um, Green Arrow, issue three by Joshua Williamson. So, we've left off on a story that feels a bit weird in some places. But at the same time, it seems like this story actually is using its third issue to sort of kick things up a notch. We've got some fun reveals here. When we last left off, when we started, um, Green Arrow was missing. And his entire family was looking for him. And then we found Leon, um, Roy Harper's daughter. She was there. She was happy to be reunited with her dad. We were all happy. And then she was teleported away and said, Amanda Waller knows! And Roy Harper is like ready to go, go full scorched earth. And like, alright, where's Amanda Waller? Then Leon ended up with Ollie. And Ollie's like, yeah, I'm not really trying to find any way back. Because I think it's pointless. And yeah. Then Leon's like, well... Don't you miss anything? Like, you know, your your son who you keep letting down, Roy. Like, your surrogate son, Roy. Um, Black Canary who you don't deserve. Like, you know, or that son that you remembered you had because of things. And that's just enough to make Ollie realize, oh yeah, I do love those things. And he goes off to try to find a way there. Meanwhile, um, Roy has gone off into, I think it's, I believe it's Rikers, yes. And he is engaging with He's trying to find Count, get a hold of Count Vertigo, who says he knows something, and he's interrupted by Peacemaker because James Gunn. Pretty much the only reason I think he's here. So anyway, we pick off with this. We see Ollie and Leon heading off to somewhere. They've been teleported somewhere, and Ollie knows where it is, and he's met by the Legion of Superheroes, an organization I cannot bring myself to care about. But luckily, Connor's there, so we're good. We're good. Someone I know. Um, do I know anyone on this list? Um, no, 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 no. All right, good. So, um, Ollie embraces Connor. There's a little fun chat they have here about, you know, about him apologizing. Hey, there's a lot that he needs to talk about. And Connor goes like, look, the beauty, the beautiful thing about being trapped in the future is that we have plenty of time to catch up. So that's great. And they want to figure out exactly what's been going on, why they keep teleporting around, and whatnot. So, okay, cool. Meanwhile, Roy and Peacemaker are going at it. And, um, yeah, Count Vertigo is. Count Vertigo interrupts himself, like, you know, interrupts everything, because everybody's just busy fighting. And he's like, Count Vertigo is like, you know what, let's bring this plot, to, let's move this plot forward. And so he uses Count Vertigo powers, and Canary puts a whole stop on that. So we're good, we're all focused. And Peacemaker's like, all right, you know what? I'll tell you what. You're apparently the best shot there is. Roy's like, yeah, I'm with you so far. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to throw that helmet up in the air. Whoever shoots it first wins. And if he wins, hey, I'll give you 30 minutes with Count Vertigo. All right? And if I win, you get out of here. All right? I'm like, you know what? Points to Peacemaker. So they do it. And Roy wins. <laughs> and so Vertigo talks. And he talks about the last time um, he saw Waller was after the whole crisis event and and the issue of Ollie. In fact, the last time he saw him, he was alive. And then Leon talks in about the fact that, hey, she'd been taken somewhere. And she remembered seeing Waller talking to someone in a hood about keeping the family separated. And then she kept being teleported to different places, the past, the present, the future, and it's been crazy. She finally met up with her dad, and then she was teleported away. So, Walter is connected with this, but there seems to be some other mysterious person involved, presumably an archer. And when I first saw this, I was like, oh, Merlin. It could be Merlin. I'm like, all right, all right, Merlin's trying to be totally chaotic in Ollie's life, but we'll find out later as Brainiac is talking about, so this um, device put in you was put in by Amanda Waller, and it works like the suicide um, chips that you know are, that are in the Suicide Squad. So if you act wrong, boom, boom, ba boom, and um, I'm going to see another one to really figure out how to safely remove it without killing you all. So 
Uh, then they come across this. Then they find this all connected to this dark energy transporter. And they don't know what it is, but I was like, I know what it is. I know what it is. And he touches it like this was a discussion I made. It was all part of a plan that I was told by myself. And I'm like, so now I see an old Oliver Queen who's like, so Ollie, I hate to tell you this, but your family can never be together. If you do, horrible things will happen that can never be undone. So, yeah, we're going to separate you all. You have to be separate. You can never go home. You can never see anybody again. And, um, yeah, so once again, the cause of all of Oliver Queen's problems is himself. And Leah's like, so, we're not doing that. No. What we're going to do is, we're going to put the family back together. And I was like, well, I don't really, um, but it's for the best. And I was like, why? Why? When do you take your own advice? Like, good point, good point. So that's how the story relatively ends, but before that comes with Poppy ending, they're attacked by a bunch of green energy constructs, and it's revealed that this is also part of agreement Ollie planned for, and the person who's here to stop them is Hal Jordan. But not just any Hal Jordan, Hal Jordan Parallax. Remember, power corrupts. Absolute power is Parallax, and that's how the comic ends. Ultimately, this is sort of a weird reveal, but I don't hate it. But we still haven't found out how Amanda Waller properly ties into this. Remember, when last time we properly saw Amanda Waller, she was having conversation with some mysterious people behind the light saying this metahuman thing's getting out of control. All right, this is like the fifth time the universe is almost ended because of these people. We need to do something. And now we see her in, uh, involved with something with Oliver Queen. So Oliver Queen has been in the background for a lot of what was going on in DC Rebirth. He seemed to have some sort of knowledge of what was going on here. After the events of Justice League No Justice, he was given a sort of special device to take out the Justice League by the Justice League, so there is something going on there. But this um, interaction here seems to be totally his own making. And I don't know, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about Ollie to really make this sort of comparison that this seems mostly in character um, it doesn't seem terrible. Um, I'm really just waiting for Leon and Roy to meet up again. That really is what's keeping me here. If they don't meet up again, I'm going to hate this entire thing. But um, I want to know what big event is coming that clearly Ollie is now going to trigger by them being together. Also, why can't... What, what, what does Green Arrow's family... What does the Arrow family have to do with the greater universe? Like, I get it. And there was that, what, Future's End story in New 52 where Green Arrow was killed and it sent the whole super community into disarray. Uh, but it's not like it's the first time Molly's died, so I don't know. I don't know. Next we have Green Lantern by Jeremy Adams. This is issue two, so we really liked issue one, Hal Jordan back on the scene and whatnot. My one issue with the story is that we're doing a lot of then and now and it's kind of throwing the story off, but anyway. We arrive at our present situation from the first issue. Um, Hal Jordan's back doesn't really have a working ring, or at least doesn't have, seem to have one in general. It's weird, but anyway, uh, we pick up where we left off, which is which was actually a month ago. So he uh, fights that Manhunter. He gets supercharged by that energy there. So he's back in the air. He's feeling really good. Hal Jordan has always felt more comfortable in the air, going at super speeds. He legitimately was Maverick. He legit was Maverick, alright? So, that's why we think Tom Cruise should have played Hal Jordan at some point. But anyway, he's enjoying it, stopping crime. Being a Green Lantern is... Once Hal put the ring on, there was no other place for him to go. That's kind of it. So to see him now, whenever he tries to sort of get back in the swing of being a normal person, it drives him insane. Alright, he just can't do it. He can't be normal. And I think that's what makes him such a good superhero, in a lot of ways. But... Anyway, while basking in the joy of, you know, being able to fly so high, be so free, the ring turns off or runs out of charge, and he starts falling. And, um, yeah, yeah, starts falling again. And we don't quite know what happened there, but anyway, he meets up with Kilowog. And Kilowog, just so I talk to him, I'm not sure if Kilowog is stationed there or if he's just visiting. Um, I hope he's stationed there as the actual Green Lantern for the Sector, which is also weird because Earth has a buttload of Earth Lanterns, so I don't know why they need Kilowog. Kilowog is also still the best drill sergeant they've ever had, so he should be there training new recruits. But during this conversation, we do find out that Hal is the one that quit the Green Lantern Corps, which was stupid. I mean, he's been fired before, so at some point he was bound to just quit. But this, this is really a part of the whole United Planets thing. 
ID you know, with the idea of the Green Lantern as being part of a bigger sort of UN or NATO, so to speak. And I think that's an interesting idea. But it's I think it's very telling that Hal can't handle being part of a team when before the Green Lantern Corps were the sort of de facto justice in the galaxy, well, the universe really. But I don't know. I, don't know. I think it's I think it's also the fact that Hal has enough trouble dealing with the Guardians. Now he has to deal with the Guardians, and over them is a bunch of bureaucrats that really don't know him or anything he does. So yeah, I sort of get that. But now Hal is just sort of feels like he can't handle being in a normal life. And Kilowog says, no, dude, you got this, all right? You're one of the finest... Uh, uh, lanterns we've ever had, if not the finest. You forge a lantern out of you forge a ring out of your own willpower. You can handle getting a job, and lo and behold, he does. In 24 hours, Hal goes from working in the mailroom to being a a pilot again. And the first person he's piloting for is his ex, Carol Ferris, and her new boyfriend. I'm sorry, fiance. Although she seems to want to downgrade him to boyfriend as soon as she sees that Hal's there. So. It's interesting, really. Um, his name's Nathan, and like I said, as soon as like how it's hard to tell if Hal's being sincere here or if Hal's just being Hal. And by that I mean like you know he's like yeah I, I respect you like nice to meet you we can be friends. No, he's not. He's he's still in love with Carol. There's no way he can be that person. He could barely be that person in New Fifty Two. Granted, that was just cringe. Her all of a sudden dating Kyle Rayner. <laughs> but whatever. So, um, they have like a little joke there, like you know, you know how you know, you know when Hal acts out, is you know, she told when it says, oh yeah, she told me about. It. She's like, oh, all good, I hope. It's like, eh, hey, like we, well, you know how she gets. Like, oh boy, do I. It's essentially some good ribbing between the two of them, but it doesn't quite work out. And Nathan, not knowing about Hal, is sort of trying to be cordial, trying to be fun, and he's you know resp responding to the energy Hal puts out. So it's hard to think of Nathan's anything other than just like a lovable putz, you know, like, you know, um, but you know, uh, Carol's like, don't trust him, all right, underneath that smile, uh, he's, he, that he constantly wears, he's a man that will break your heart, I'm like, oh, oh, okay, Nathan's like, okay, that's, that's, that's okay though, but you know what, take this time to relax, in other words, Nathan's basically saying, look, whatever he's going to dish out, I can take it, all right, um, Hal is a nice guy, the, real, the problem is, this just this is the problem for everything. Like, Hal showed up, just found out that the girl he loves is engaged, okay? Um, Hal's probably going to get some ribbing in. But anyway, Hal comes in, like, get ready to start his new job. Um, his pilot, his, um, his he first pilot, I guess, is like, you know what? This is going to be a bit different from, like, you know, um, fighter jets and whatnot. So, Hal's like, okay, sure. They go in, they fly, and, you know... Everything seems fine. Hal can't help himself, like, oops, and makes it so that wine spills on Nathan's shirt. I'm like, oh, uh, all right. So he goes and goes to check on him. Under the guy's checking on him, uses his ring, so his ring does work um, to lock Nathan in the room. And he sort of like to talk to Carol about it, or just, you know, proving he's not quite all right with this. That's really all that is. And really, at the end of it, he does say, like, I get it, you've moved on. Nathan seems like a real nice guy. And he's trying to figure out, like, what is it about Nathan that, you know, was able to push you to the whole marriage thing. And she points out, he's a nice guy, he treats me well. How points out, he did all that. He's a nice guy, which Carol agrees with. He treats her well, she agrees with that. And here's the kicker, the one that he can't defend, he doesn't leave. Hal is destined to go off into the space. He just loves doing wherever the core needs him, he'll go. And Hal's had to struggle balancing that out, so... This makes sense. Uh, that was the issue in New 52 when he was fired. Yeah, New 52's continuity was weird about that. Well, not even continuity, just like how the story ordered itself was so weird. How was fired, but at the same time, how was also a Green Lantern. But when he was finally back on Earth, he had to convince Carol that he was here to stay, as well as the fact that he was going to be a proper adult, um, which he tried. He really tried. And in the middle of the conversation, the co pilot comes like, Guys, um, I need your help. There's some crazy stuff out here. So, this will be continued in Night Terrors Green Lantern issue 1. So, I don't like this. I don't like Night Terrors. Like, I haven't heard anything about it. I try to avoid it because I don't want to be put into any sort of headspace about it before I go in. But first of all, this seems to be a horror story. It's j 
this story starts in July. Why can't we just move this to October? All right, and this is going to affect other books too. And this kills momentum. This is issue two. So which means by issue three, this book is already going to have its momentum derailed. Now, if hopefully Jeremy Adams, who I'm reading his Flash, he's done a lot of good stuff on Flash. Hopefully, he can integrate this with it with his main story without having it take away too much from it. Um, and I think it's affecting it's affecting some other books too. So I'm really not comfortable with this. Um, hopefully, we get the momentum going. But ultimately, this was fun. I like seeing Kilowog. If you go by the cover, Kilowog is hanging out here for a while. Planet Earth is under some form of quarantine, if that's true. So um, we'll see where that goes. We all know what's going to happen with Carol and Nathan. All right, Hal Jordan and Carol Ferris are destined to be together. All right, Superman and Lois Lane, um, Batman and sometimes Catwoman, Batman and sometimes Talia, Batman and the fans dream about it, Wonder Woman. All right, it's kind of it. Um, who else? Who else? Barry Allen and Iris, uh, Barry Allen and Iris West, um, Wally West, and why can I never remember her name? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, Nightwing and insert Batgirl to Starfire here. Tim Drake and it used to be Stephanie Brown, but I, I, I'm not gonna do Bernard. I'm not. I'm not. If for no other reason than Chuck Dixon did not have Bernard be bisexual or gay. So I don't quite get that. I'm not, I'm not a fan of changing change something that big about a character that someone else created. But anyway, anyway, enough of that. That's a whole other discussion. At some point, I will go over um, Fitzmartin's Tim Drake run. But it shan't be now. And finally, we have a very unique book, Wonder Woman issue 800. Now, we're only going over the last half of this story because the first half is continuing Blecky, Becky Cloonan's story. Is it Cloonan? I've heard Conrad. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. So Becky um, has been handling Wonder Woman up until this point here. The new writer for this is going to be Tom King. Now, I can tell you there are some good Tom King stories. All right. I can tell you Tom King can write a decent story. He tends to not do so well, in my experience, with women. So why he was given Wonder Woman... I don't know. Also, after being on Batman, how do you... No, you, you start with Wonder Woman and build up to Batman. Like, I hate to say it. Um, but if I'm being honest, this could be a good thing. Wonder Woman's biggest problem is she does not have high-profile talent on her books. People with big ideas trying to come in and really put her through the grinder. Now, granted, I haven't read Becky Cloonan's Wonder Woman. I hope I got her name right. I hope I got the last name right. Is it on the cover? Is it on the cover? Oh, it is. Uh, Clunin. All right. Um, I haven't read her Wonder Woman. I will at some point. At some point, I need to do a comic run talk on Wonder Woman. Because we've done Batman. We've done Superman. I need to do Wonder Woman. But the problem is, her comic run talk, if we did DC Rebirth, would only be 30 issues. And to me, that is disgusting. Um, Greg Rucker should have stayed on for at least another 30 more issues. Uh, because all he did in his first run was reset the status quo. But anyway, let's get into this. Why is this important? Why are we choosing to read it now? Because Tom King is introducing a new element. And let's just get into it. All right, so our story starts off with um, John Kent Superman and Damian Wayne in that I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry if you all like it, I hate it. Pop collar, trench coat, Damian Wayne Batman. And they're waiting for someone. And they... Damien is skeptical of this person, or rather, seems to have a low opinion of him, seems that, that this person's rather flaky, and John's like, no, she'll be fine, she, she's good, and he also points out that he can't seem to see her, like, you know, he's got all this special vision and hearing, and she's not coming, this person's not coming up, and she is late, and this person shows up, and it is the character known as Trinity. This is the daughter of Wonder Woman, so I don't, this is what Tom King's created, the daughter of Wonder Woman. This story takes place far into, presumably, this character's tenure. In other words, we're not starting off with the characters being in. It's believed that the actual story that Tom King will, t will actually write will be the beginning. In other words, how this character came to be. I hate this. It never really works. But anyway. So, they point out you're late. She's like, I was, I'm late because I was fighting 12 deities. I'm like, alright. Alright, so what does that matter? Just say you're sorry you're late. I mean, if the deities don't play a role in this, this is sort of the problem. This is why we can't really properly review this story, despite the fact that it's only a couple pages. Um, this is not a good start to your character. 
all right? We should have seen, in, in a better story, in a better written story, we'd have gone with the fact that we'd have seen um, John and Damien talking about um, Trinity, and then we'd see what Trinity's doing. See Trinity fighting monsters, helping out, and whatnot. But her entire story here has her set up as a very unlikable person. She talks about how good she is and how bad they are at their jobs, and this could come off as some playful ribbing, but the art doesn't really tell us that. She feels very condescending here, and I... This is not good. Your first issue, like, when you introduce a new character, you have to endear them to their... to your... You have to endear the audience to that character, and I don't think this does it. So, she needs their help with something, and... Sort of like, you know, I could do it myself, but, you know, I think you guys can handle it. I'm like, well, then, what do you need him for? There's talk about this cave, and I'm always like, you know, we're family. You don't do me favors. You're obligated to help. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? All right, we're family. You don't do favors. It's obligations. I'm like, this does not seem right. All right, and again, maybe we're dealing with this character after something has happened, but you shouldn't do it this way. You really shouldn't. So anyway, we have tests. Uh, trials for everyone. So John Ken has always talked about how he can endure any any, any sorts of torture. Whatnot. He's the invulnerable Superman, the invincible Superman. He's like, okay, I'll take this trial of pain. So he grabs the statue and suffers unending pain. There's a trial of skill. So Damien has to fight this uh, immortal warrior, the skilled warrior. So we're going on from there. And then the trial of honor where Trinity is met by Wonder Woman. I believe it's Wonder Woman. They don't quite tell it, but we do know that this is presumed to be her mother. And she's like, you are not supposed to be here. You sworn oath not to be here. Um, and this does not seem like a happy reunion. Because when I would think about this, I would think of Hippolyta meeting with Wonder Woman after she gives ex explicit orders not to come back here. There's talk about how she has the black lasso, that she ha wields all three lassos. And she subdues who would believe to be Diana. It's definitely Diana, or it's Apollos. Either way, she subdues her. She also says, like, you're not Wonder Woman, so this might not be Wonder Woman. This is probably still Diana, so Diana's no longer Wonder Woman, because, you know, she's there. And we then get her name, Elizabeth Marston Prince, so I'm not sure about the name Elizabeth, but Marston is definitely after the original creator of Wonder Woman and Prince, Diana Prince. Okay, so that tells us nothing. Um, Elizabeth may be a name that the father picked, presumably. The only father that she could possibly have would be Steve Trevor, so, I guess. She meets this dude in the cell who talks about, like, you know, stuff. It's stuff is kind of unimportant. It all sound it's very, it's almost Tom King speak. There's a whole lot of bubbles here, a whole lot of stuff that's supposed to sound interesting, but he talks about the the um, the myth that killed America and birthed the new wonder. And I'm like, okay, all right, so apparently he's here, and it all ties to something that Diana did and involved the death of America and stuff. Now, I'd heard about this before, but anyway, let's get the important thing. This is where the comic ends. So, I'd heard about something Tom King was doing with Wonder Woman involving America and a choice that was made, and she loses, like, her citizenship, like, she's no longer allowed in America or whatever. O okay, weird. All right. What happened to one of them being like the diplomat for the planet? I don't. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. Um. I think if anything, I'm upset that Yara Floor just got swept under the rug because she's done now. She's done. So we've introduced. So we had Donna Troy. Donna Troy. Donna continuity messed up. So nothing of any real merit happened. Uh, then we had Cassie Sandsmark. Cassie Sandsmark was a. Decent enough one to go from what I've heard, but she was mostly re relegated to Young Justice and Teen Titans. Uh, this was Donald Troy in Teen Titans. And then for a while, when Diana stopped being Wonder Woman, if I could be wrong, but there was a moment where she wasn't Wonder Woman, and like Donna Troy or Cassie took up the mantle, it's also believed in the future that Cassie will be Wonder Woman, so who knows? Who cares? That future's not really going to happen anyway. Um, and then they introduced Yara Floor. So, Yara Flor was supposed to be the one who was from Brazil. So, DC sort of had this weird idea that they were sort of like, well, we're going to have more than one Wonder Woman. I'm like, oh, okay. But technically, you already had two, not counting Diana. So, that put it up to three. Then you introduce Yara. Yara was supposed to be the Amazons from Brazil, I guess. Which, um, she had a great design. She seemed like a really fun character. So, that sort of worked. Then you had Cassie, who was supposed to be the 
no one knew what Cassie Donald was going to be. So, whatever. Um, then you had Nubia, who was supposed to be Queen of the Amazon. Tipolita was one Woman for a while for the Justice League. Then you arguably Artemis is supposed to be one Woman for the for the bottom of Gaul. And now you've introduced um, Trinity, who's also Queen of the Amazons, leader of the Justice League. In other words, she gets to be total girl boss. Um, this is terrible. So, this is something that... Tom King and a bunch of other characters, bunch of other writers and creators have made when introducing their new characters. They believe powers make them interesting. First of all, we already know this is Wonder Woman. It's a Wonder Woman-esque character. We already have an understanding of their of their power set. All right. Now you can enhance that a bit, but you don't have to add all this other stuff. Like I'm also leader of the Justice League. I'm like, why? How is she more qualified than John and Damien? I mean, I can see an argument for for anyone being more qualified than Damien to lead the Justice League, but still, what? Leader of the Amazons nepotism um, but also y'all like I said y'all floor is done all right there's only be like what one 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 book now and she's not gonna be in this one so what then we had wonder like who's her father who's her father was she made from clay more than likely um, the previous story in this with Becky Clinton has nothing to do with that although you could argue that because in that story Diana is in this sort of coma and goes through pretty much the memories and dreams of her loved ones the people she loves the most that that impacts her the creation of Trinity of Elizabeth but I don't quite see that matter I, mean, I don't think Tom King really cares about that but again this character comes off as totally unlikable and not the way Damian Wayne was so when Damian Wayne was introduced he wasn't likable but we already had the setup there this is a character that was groomed legitimately groomed and created to take over for the League of Assassins all right to take over the mantle of Batman so we get it we get why he's a little pain in the ass but Elizabeth's supposed to be the daughter of Wonder Woman presumably will Tom King cop out on this is Trinity just a huge smokescreen who knows? But again, y'all floor is kind of done. All right. And to be fair, y'all floor and Trinity and even John Kent have this problem in that the writers that took over for them after their creation dropped the proverbial ball. Damien Wayne had Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison introduced a very fun, well, not really fun, but an interesting character. And then writers like Peter Tomasi um, came in and elevated him. All right. It, your char if your character can't survive um, the run with his initial creator, he doesn't deserve to survive. That's all there is to it. Um, John Kent, I forget who created John Kent, but Dan Jurgens and Peter Tomasi came in and helped that character. Um, Yellow Floor did not have that seller a creative team afterwards. After her initial book in Future's End and in a fu in Future State ended after well, its what three issue run. It then went to her being on teen books. So in other words, she doesn't get to take center stage. She doesn't really have a set story. This is a mistake. Do not separate your character from her universe by putting with a bunch of characters from other quote-unquote universes. Don't stick her with the Justice League. Stick her back with Wonder Woman. Have these two interact. Stick her back with the Amazons. Have them interact. Show how she functions in that universe and then take her out. All right, but then again, I don't think DC has a clear understanding of Wonder Woman anyway. And I'm not saying I have an amazing understanding of her either. But I think she's the one character out of the Trinity, she's the one that DC has the least of knowledge going with. They just keep doing the same thing, which is nothing, nothing consistent. But who knows, maybe Black Becky Cloonan has a really good run. I don't know. I'll get to it eventually. But when that, when that stumbles, we get Yaw 4 being replaced. We get John Kent going off nowhere. All right, John Kent has not really had an interesting story. He's had writers use him as a mouthpiece. Like, after Brian Michael Bendis aged him up, Tom Taylor came in and really just sort of made him unlikable. But even more so, his stories are just not that well done. Like I said before, Tom Taylor wants to bring awareness of complex issues. And he should do that. I don't think anyone disagrees with the idea that we should use this medium to talk about interesting things. Like, comics can be political. Comics can educate people. But he doesn't. He doesn't. His stories are not that good at that. It's just John Ken is right because John Ken is right. And bisexual. And if you disagree, then you don't like bisexual people. Biphobia is a thing, according to my bisexual friends. So, whatever. Anyway, enough of my complaining. Will I read issue one? Well, I'm going to give Tom King another shot. You never know what you get with Tom King. You'll either get a really good 12 issues... Or you'll get, oh my god, burn it now. Like, I liked his Strange Adventures. I liked his Mr. Miracle. I liked the beginnings of his Batman. So, and I, I heard his Superman was good. 
and I need to get, I'll read that too. I need to pick that up. But whatever, we're, we're ranting on here. So anyway, if you're new to the Bucket Think Tank, for like, comment, share, subscribe. Check out some other videos and I'll catch you all later. This is Bucket Think Tank signing off. Thanks for watching. As always, may your fandom serve you well.